Thank you, Rod Story. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next speaker. We invited the federal, local federal member to speak to us, but um, for some reason or other she declined. But, but we do have a local woman who's been helping us fight, doing what she can from behind the scenes. She's a Labor candidate for the seat of Macquarie and is a good friend of the Hawkesbury and of Thompson Square. Ladies and gentlemen, Susan Templeman. wait is nearly over. I am the Labor candidate for the seat of Macquarie, Gee, the seat of Macquarie, named in honour of a visionary man. I am not going to stand back in silence while the local Liberal MPs trash his legacy. There are many things that I've learned and love about Thompson Square and you've heard of many of them today. And it is thanks to the core group, a bunch of people from all political persuasions who put aside those political differences and came together to stand up for something that matters for future generations. So they deserve a huge round of applause. From, from lips like Rod Story, the Greens and people who have previously not even been involved in politics. It's been a privilege to be able to connect them into other people in the community who care about this. And I can see people here from the Blue Mountains, there are people from Blacktown and lots of locals who obviously know that this place matters. Most of all, we know Thompson Square stands for the values of a fair go. That's why it isn't named after a king or a landed gentry. It's named after a bloke who did the wrong thing, paid the price, and had got a second chance. As Rod says, got a fair go, a value we stand for today. But, but there's one thing you haven't been told about Thompson Square, and, and in the archaeology that's been done through this process has been enlightening. We know the deep Aboriginal history here, and I pay my respects to the Darug people on whose land we are standing. What we also know is that this, the archaeology of this square reveals the anti-authoritarian nature of our early settlers. People who weren't really willing to stand aside and be told what to do by some bloke up top. So the story we've been told is that when Governor Macquarie came out here and tried to impose his rigid grid-like system on an existing settlement, the locals stood back and watched him put up his new fences the minute he was gone, though, they pulled those fences out and went back to their maybe crooked, slightly all over the place form. And I think what that shows is that as a character of our nation, we don't just sit back and do what we're told. And we shouldn't be sitting back and doing what we're told here. I have to say that I am disappointed that from a federal perspective, we haven't been able to find a way to intervene. I have taken this issue to the Minister for Environment, Tony Burke, Environment and Heritage. I've taken it to the Prime Minister in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with her. Unfortunately, this is a state issue, which is why I've decided to be public about my opposition to it, having tried behind the scenes to do what we can. The point for me is that this place is unique, as you've heard. Once it's gone, it's gone. And Bart Bassett, Kevin Connolly and Ray Williams should be condemned for failing to admit their misjudgment. And who can say why they spoke to and determined to put this bridge through? It's in spite of the unwillingness of Barry O'Farrell and his cronies to listen to logic, we all have to continue fighting for Thompson Square. It isn't over till it's over. I'm certainly determined to support the moves to have this square listed and considered for listing on the National Heritage Register. <laughs> Finally, this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for preservation of a uniquely historic area rather than destruction. It's an opportunity for the building of a better bridge, not merely a replacement. And it's a massive opportunity for a special town to be revitalised by a state government project 
rather than destroyed. So let's keep fighting.